Hi there viewers and gamers alike out there and welcome back for more of Gotcha Memories the visual novel and this is Alliance Teen. This game is rated T for teens and yeah and uh, and this is still a part of the Ultimate Arkham Universe so yes let's do this oh. mm. Almost immediately upon crossing the border to the anomalous area, me and Ellie notice something off. The anomaly in this area is strong. My head is clouded. I feel so dizzy. <sighs> My head. What was that? Oh, fine. Well, I look at Ellie. Her fluttering wings are flapping weirdly behind her, so that means she was affected too by the strong presence of this area. Oh, fine. More importantly, I stare behind Ellie. She catches my looks and turns around. Oh, my. Yeah, that's so many enemies. Nothing we haven't dealt with before, but... I understand. I know that. We are looking at a veritable field full of anomalies of all kinds. The usual cubes I have dealt with before, the bigger variant, and then... There is the ominous looking black eye. I ready my sword in both hands. Ellie, get closer to me. She does as she was told. Sitting on top of my head and taking a hold of my hood. Yeah, I'm wearing a hood. What do you expect? Between the comic strip thumbnail and the video itself. Okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> Yay! You know there is no way we can sneak past those guys, right? So you haven't picked up concealing magic yet, huh? Even if I were to call Mitsuko or Lilith via gotcha to cast a spell on us, the power would probably attract those things' attention. I give a predatory grin. Seems we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way, Ellie. All right, just before any boss battle. There's always a wave of minions to deal with. Uh-oh. Slowly but surely, all the anomalies are surrounding us. And there we go, picture fixed. Uh, that's how it is. They are too slow. Yep, it's those cubic numbers. One zero one one zero zero one zero zero one one zero zero one oh zero one oh oh. Ellie's barrier, created in an instant, reflected the laser back to the cubes, which destroyed some of them. Instant instinctively, I threw my sword and deflected an attack that was coming behind us. And I was looked, and when I looked. The sphere had extended several tentacles. It seems this type has different attacks. Not if I have to say anything about it! Summon DJ Phantom! Keep that thing occupied for a while! The Reaper of the Gear will decide your fate. Okay, Ellie, let's go! I left Phantom behind to deal with the giant sphere, not wanting to waste energy handling it. I can make the units I summon stay longer if I focus energy on them, and although wasteful, it would use less energy than summoning multiple units to deal with something like that. 
if it is, is as strong as I believe it is. And no, I'm not summoning Aoi who's in a battlefield in a swimsuit, okay? So no! <laughs> she... She's too... Complex! Don't ask. I... It happened before. Many, many times. But not really, though. The real Phantom won't be hurt, though. Even if the Yudenai Summon is defeated, he will just disappear like a defeated Summon in a video game. Woo! Ellie protected me from cubes that suddenly were flying in our direction. Trying to ram me, but she rammed them instead, sending them flying backwards. <laughs> A giant cube suddenly appeared in front of me, blocking my passage. Yeah, they are imp- those cubes are imbeciles, I give you that. Ellie's barrier once again held strong and reflected the giant's cube's laser towards it, destroying it in one shot. I dashed forward, using Ellie's opening to my advantage, cutting any cubes I came across with my sword, while relying on Ellie to deflect sneak attacks, or to reflect the laser back to the bigger cube. Phantom had already faded, so I guess he didn't manage to defeat the giant sphere by himself in time. But then again, I didn't use my full power to summon him, making use of him only as a distraction so that I could continue advance. Whenever one of those giant black eyes appeared, I made a random summon and had them serve as a distraction to it. My advantage being that those things were slow, ev so even after the units I set faded away, they wouldn't be able to pursue me. Hmm. Keep going, Ellie. We are almost there! Now, if only the crowd of cubes lessened some more, we could pass! New cubes kept crushing at us, but we just kept cutting them now, not allowing ourselves to suffer a single wound. With Ellie as my defense, we can't be beaten. We are approaching the middle! I kept using the UGPS on one hand in this entire time so I could know where I was going, and truly enough, by following its directions, we have arrived at the center. Now to close this anomaly and get rid of all those annoying pests. I barely managed to duck in time to avoid getting both me and Ellie hit by a powerful laser, and guess who that is? I looked back to where it shot. It had struck the anomalies pursuing us, and all of them had been destroyed, turned into dark puddles. I... I... Both of us look back towards the origin of the powerful laser attack, and you're not, and guess who that is, and I'm pretty sure I know who it is. It is none other than this guy. Ellie, we have to be careful. This doesn't look like the other anomalies. It is not a normal average anomaly, no. It then lowered its arms, seeming to simply stare at us with a humanoid head. Or was it staring at us with the eye in its chest? I would never know. It raised the other hand in the sky. I braced myself for an attack. It snapped its fingers? What? NANI?! Is this anomaly causing an earthquake? Wait. Uh, my eyes widen. How? A gigantic dome of darkness was being raised high above the sky, slowly covering the whole of the anomalous area. I can't see a thing in this helmet! Curses it managed to seal up this entire area in a dome of shadows! It's unbelievable!
It's good to know how I voice. At this rate, this will be just like fighting Mitsuko all over again, except much more deadly. Welcome, you're in a you're shrouded in a dome of darkness where there is no light at all. All you can see is that guy with the chest eye. The only thing I can see now is that red glow of the eye in the middle of its chest. Didn't it notice that this thing glows? Wait. Uh, neither do I, Ellie. The entire dome that surrounded us started to glow red, giving us visibility once again, even if only a little, but... I look and I pale at the sight that awaits me. A ridiculous number of eyes opened up on the walls of the black dome, all of them glaring at us. Then they started to move slightly downwards, making bubbly protuberances. protuberances. <laughs> the dome now looked like a bubbly volcano, except its bubbles were pointed inside rather than outside. Oh no, all the eyes started to glow. In other words, they're going to start firing. Ellie! The moment the lasers started to rain upon us with the fury of a thousand gods, Ellie created a full barrier around both of us, protecting us from the onslaught. Then the shadow decided to join in on the rain of lasers and lifted both of its hands towards us. That is one loud explosion, doesn't it? Ellie made a grunt, but still held both of her arms outstretched to protect us from the onslaught. However, the force of both the rain of lasers and the recent attack made me go to my knees. Ellie! Are you alright? Wow. Curses, this is bad. Really, really bad. If that anomaly wanted to ambush us, it succeeded. The eyes up on the that dome of darkness are not letting up in the slightest, and the humanoid anomaly just keeps bombarding us with its ridiculously strong energy blasts. Ellie! I could barely move. The force of this ridiculous rain of energy is making me feel heavy and paralyzed. <laughs> Terrific! A similar enemy? Looney! How are they? Terrific. They're all in an all-out offensive against the same anomaly, but is it? I can see Ellie focusing completely on holding the barrier against the bombardment, but I can also see the signs of fatigue appear in her. Curses that we won't last that long! I am worried about Mitsuko and Lilith fighting something like that, but I need to have faith in their ability to fight together. I must first find a way to get out of this literal bullet rain! Ellie's voice is clearly strained as she uses all her powers to preserve her barrier. Being bombarded from both above, back, front, left, and right, the sound of the explosions is deafening, but I can still somehow manage to hear her determined words. To make matters worse, if I were to try and summon a unit, they would be defeated instantly by the barrage of energy, so I can't even do that. I could transform my sword into a gun or into a ranged weapon, but the second one would make me lose my weapon in the first place. Wait, of course. I need to transform my sword into a ranged weapon, one that can fire projectiles! With great effort, I make my sword morph into a simple handgun. However, this gun doesn't make use of bullets. Instead, 
I'll make it use my energy instead. Think of it as like Gallic gun, perhaps, or soul gun, which, whatever you call it. Ellie is sounding even more tired, her voice weak by the minute. <laughs> Struggling against the seemingly increased gravity, I raise my gun and target the humanoid anomaly in front of me. It can't be! Most immediately upon firing the energy bullet, my projectile got destroyed, barely managed to get out of the barrier before one of the numerous lasers destroyed it. No, I need to keep trying! Yeah, you hear that bang, that is... <laughs> uh. It's no use, no matter what I do, the bullets I fire keep getting destroyed, not even getting halfway of my target. I could hear Ellie's voice echo like a mantra, even in the deafening sound of explosions. She wasn't even focused on anything else right now, only on defending. I hope this works, Looney! Did they manage to win? Right! I nodded, although I'm not sure if Looney I can can uh, can see the gesture through the comms device she gave us. I need I need to use the bug fix. I need to throw it at the exact center of the room. But the problem is the anomaly is standing right where the UGPS says is the target. I have to get up. I have to get up. I won't allow Ellie to be hurt any further. She's saying she is the one who can save me from this monst uh, this abomin abominous monstrosity. Her whole body is on fire, sustaining the barrier against a massive onslaught of dangerous lasers. Lasers that could hurt more than any nuke could. Wow, she's going to sacrifice her whole life to protect me with that he with that powerful barrier that cannot be broken, but it's starting to break apart, but somehow managing to stay strong even if we are almost powerless. Ellie, you shouldn't have... You shredded me in wind, you burned me with fire, you drowned me with water, you shocked me with light, and you crushed me with darkness, but still... And yet... You betrayed me in the worst way possible, and still... Yet... I did save you, Ellie. Now I know how Green Lantern hates himself so much on Injustice 2. Hal Jordan. Never once I did demand to pay for... Tr Never once I demand payment. No, no, I did not. I don't demand it, no. And now she is now she is saying something about what she's opening out her true feelings about me. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, Ellie. Oh, my. Uh, I guess this is what happens when you when you become something, when you fall in love with someone who is the protagonist, such as myself, is is worth the reward. Tears of a broken heart. Oh my. She can't feel her body anymore? Wow, but she will not lower the barrier and won't reduce its power. Only weird and sick people do that. <laughs> oh, belly. Uh, I know how it be. I like I said. I really know how you feel. I really do. But you already made me happy, you know. Even a person, even a, even a, even a lady who is a Sundara, per, has a Sundara personality type can fall in love. <laughs> what are you saying? You're admitting it. And she can't even think straight right now. Oh yeah, though the barrage of attacks stop. Do I love Ellie too? The answer yes. No reason. I only came to save those and, and to protect the ones I love. Yeah, the sky is clear. Wow. Able to pull it off and able to make it pulling it the last second that anomaly is gone for now I wouldn't leave Ellie behind no I'm not leaving her behind Stared at the ground with cold, hateful eyes, observing the last vestiges of the humanoid anomaly disappear in particles of data. Stay dead, you monster! I haven't noticed it. I haven't noticed how much Ellie was pushing herself to protect me. I could hear her mutterings, which were already clear enough that she wasn't fully there. But I couldn't see her. I couldn't see how much she was sacrificing to keep the barrier going. I managed to do it, to get my feet and slowly rush to the center of this area. I managed to activate the bug fixer and then everything seemed like it was getting better. The dome of darkness slowly disappeared, no longer having any power and the humanoid anomaly started roaring as if in pain and its attacks completely lost its powers it sat there stunned that was when i decided to check on ellie it broke my heart ellie was severely hurt i almost panicked blood was coming out of her mouth nose eyes and ears like her arms looked like as if they had been scratched by a wild animal and her wings had lost all color 
In other words, she's not. She is about to pass away. She is mostly dead, but slightly alive. Which works from the Prince's Bride, thanks to Miracle Max. <laughs> and that will work! She was still somewhat conscious and looked at me seemingly confused before glancing around. It seemed she had noticed that we had won and the faint with a smile on her face. A small laser came wide from me, striking a boulder not too far away. I remembered that the enemy was still there. The enemy was still there, and I saw red. I gently set Ellie down on the ground, and the next thing I know, I was driving my sword in and out of the anomaly, slashing, stabbing, plummeting. By the time I realized what I was doing, that the humanoid anomaly was little more than a puddle on the ground. Ellie, I need to go back to her. Hearing my eyes away from the carnage I caused, I quickly make my way back to where I left Ellie. She was still unconscious, but her breathings were normal at least. I still over with that mostly dead but slightly alive thing, so why not? 75% she's gone, the 25% she's alive. Oh, Ellie. Gently took hold of the little fairy in my hands. And caring about the blood on her body, she was hurt because she wanted to protect me. No, it's not a stretch to believe that she also saw that as a punishment for what happened when she was corrupted. But what matters is, she went that far to protect me. Her shield, her force, she forced it to keep going at full power no matter how much magic she pumped into it no matter how much would it hurt her I can feel tears start to gather in my eyes don't worry my cute little fairy I won't let such a thing ever happen again I'm not going to let you get hurt for my sake again Gently embraced her unconscious body closer to mine. It's not as bad as it looks. It's not as bad. The last time she wasn't breathing and I really feared the worst. My body glowed as I focus as I, fo as I focus gentle, soothing, and healing energy into her body, watching as her wounds slowly vanish, although the blood stains were still on her. I get up slowly, making sure not to make tremble too much, because I didn't want to upset Ellie in her sleep. I look at I looked at a portal and walked towards it. Well, I look down in shame, still gently cuddling the sleeping fairy closer to me. Ellie overexerted herself. The enemy attacked us with a rain of those lasers. She forced herself to make her barrier last until the end of the battle. She was already unconscious halfway through. Well... Not saying she got hit by those lasers, no. I shake my head at them. No, she didn't. Her barrier really did not let anything cross it. I believe she was bleeding because she forced her body to maintain the barrier, even against the terrible onslaught we were facing. I healed her before coming here, but I think she will need her rest. Hmm. Looney snapped her fingers. All the blood covering Ellie seemed to disappear in thin air. Right. Don't worry, I understand. Besides, I looked down at the fairy in my arms, was cuddling like her, like she was like a little, you know, youngling, or something like that. I 
and by the tired smile on her face, she seemed comfortable. I think she wouldn't mind staying like that for a while. Yes, I do. We have gone through a lot together, you know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I take a seat on the couch, sitting myself next to Mitsuko, with Looney and Lilith sitting side by side. Mitsuko waved one of her tails above me, and some light energy fell on me and Ellie. What was that? <laughs> what Mitsuko said. I stared fa red faced at her butt. Uh, thank you. Look back down to Ellie. She is still sleeping. She would have thrown a fit if she was conscious, no doubt. Okay! <laughs> I didn't say anything, preferring to continue staring at Ellie with a red face. I can't even deny they're teasing at this point. Some sort of guardians, a sort of guardians. It's sort, not short. Humanoid glitches that are much stronger and smarter than all the other variations we saw so far. Yeah, we've encountered a new variation while making our way to the center. A giant sphere with a single red eye. It could fire lasers too, but besides that, it could also create tentacles. They were slow though. Also, like I said before, the humanoid shadow somehow managed to, what I believe, manipulate all the other anomalies in the area to make a giant dome across the entire neighborhood. It began bubbling and then thousands upon thousands of eyes started raining lasers on us, which is what it is responsible for Ellie's current state. So, Looney's eyes blanked out for a second. Uh, so, the media in England is going crazy, huh? Hmm. Yep, it was Soul himself. S O L. He wants to take over and destroy any type of universe, but he's not going to get his wish ever. Feel myself stiffen, and from the feeling on her tail, the same happened to Lilith. Sort, sort. S -O -R S O R T. Don't add the letter H because that's bad writing. Some sort of puppet or second body controlled either consciously or unconsciously. I noted that the anomaly seemed strangely smart for a mindless bug that was only wandering about an anomalous area, but to think that those were possibly constructs under the direct control of the ultimate hacker in person? A theory and a very grim one. Still bad handwriting! To accelerate his revival. Turning into fake 
puppet bodies that would eventually be some sort of use after the anomalies areas grew in size. Ugh. So he, so Soul would sacrifice millions of lives to accelerate his revival and get revenge on the ones who, yeah, like he became Zamasu because of that one, because the uh, that the first, but the first, because that other creator names, because that other person named Soul hates this for seeing by because a disgrace and it sickens him so by destroying the ones he loved would make would would keep it would keep things in line but instead he, he made the stupidest move and that cost that person's life and this person took the name soul for himself and uh yeah that the person who destroyed one is gone for good because he thinks that is it's the right thing to do by seeing because he doesn't want a normal human being or somewhat cross into into someone that is holy like what uh it, 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 i know it's com complicated but it's but this is kind of like a little bit of a theory fact. Yeah, the more people die in one, the stronger it gets. Fake puppets will do the same, and so the anomalous areas all over the world will increase inside until the whole planet is covered and all the fake puppets are fused. It is mass. It is too much for this. Yeah, that makes me sick. It is horrible. They don't deserve such a fate for nothing for no reason. Nobody deserves like that. But 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 Soul believes they do because of what happened to that other guy whose name Soul disgusted him, and it would de so he decided to destroy and break everything. And that guy who was Soul made the stupidest move by thinking it's right. He was wrong. He was an imbecile. He got destroyed by that one person and took the name Soul for himself. Who that that other soul guy was destroyed okay as I told you uh, I know we can't seal them off by ourselves though what do you have in mind Looney so the DJs, Neon City Leaders, Excour Racers, the Guardians, the Elementa Elementals, the Dream World Citizens, and some other contacts that you have. Who? So, so Looney has a fan. <laughs> Uh huh. Making puns with his name. Uh huh. Let me put a hand on Lilith's head, petting her. Right. Looked at Mitsuko. She was smiling at the sight. I'm pretty sure I was too. The occasional times we get to witness their relationship is something beautiful to see. A loving relationship that lasted eons at least. Right. Chernobyl. Uh-huh.
Understood, ma'am. Well, let's get ourselves busy, though. Alright, she snaps her fingers and a portal opens. I nodded her with a smile on my face and proceed to enter the portal back to our hotel room. Hmm. Really? Random number generator, or RNG, is mostly used for worlds and universes based on an available data to determine the random outcome of an event. Numbers that are really not really numbers in the mathematical sense, like pi? You became known as the RNG Goddess, really? So you took the form as a fairy? You knew that the world was being afflicted by corruption and your power had been split, most of it being sealed away in what is known as the Gotcha Sword? So that's how I got it. You were just an NPC fulfilling a role. I understand. The gotcha sword wasn't where all your powers were sealed into. The menacing black sword, albeit scary looking, is completely free from the corruption now. And it's also a part of you? I see. So that's how it happened. So you, after you managed to get enough power to banish the corruption from your body, you sealed the black gotcha sword away, not because it could still be used for evil, since it was already purified despite its appearance. Wow. It's because you were afraid. So that other, that also talks like Ellie. Great, light and dark. Both of them have a crush on me, but it's in one person. Hooray! That is not creepy. That is the most wonderful thing as that Ellie would ever say for those in the the Dark Alliance and those of the Alliance members who are young lady or those are the uh, warrior women. I 
Um, I don't know what to say. This is making me too much. Wow. You no, you have no idea how much it means to me, Ellie. It's never too late. She cannot bear to lose me ever again, even if she says this many, many times. You can't bear to stay just as friends any longer, huh? I would, why would it be wrong for you to do like this anyways? Now, why would I reject you? Oh, wow. I think she means it. She really means it. believe this is something like mm, let's keep going a little bit more mm. Mm? I slowly open my eyes I open my eyes confused before looking down Ellie is looking at me with an embarrassed expression Ellie I embrace her close to my chest, taking her in a warmth. Her voice sounded a mix of insecure, happy, and confused. I was glad, just glad that she was fine after seeing the state she was in yesterday. I was more than glad that she is awake now. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're all right now, Ellie. Um, not just fainted. You were in a very bad state, bleeding all over. Thankfully, my healing skills were enough to heal you. You just really needed some rest, but... My hands, I bring her closer to my face so I could see her better. I'm really glad you're okay now, Ellie. I then brought my face closer to her well let's I'm no I'm no like like my half my size it's, it's not even half my size right and then is she no uh, not three inches not three inches high she's like seven inches high maybe six inches high six or seven inches high I think. Although, yeah, I just gave her a small kiss on her cheek. Although that they had the effect of kissing half her face, she got red in an instant. I don't know. I'll tell you soon. For now, I'll call room service and request breakfast. You can use a bath first, my lovely fairy. With a red face, she slowly made her way to where her things were, taking a pair of clothes and a towel she could take a bath, like, in private. Everyone needs privacy! She refused to look in my direction, 
But I could swear I could see a trembling smile in her face. But if there was one thing we both needed right now, it's food. We started heading out for breakfast. Breakfast is the place is always delicious, but after that, both me and Ellie had something really important to talk with each other. Why am I so nice to you? She was sitting on my open palms, cross-legged and facing me with a very vulnerable expression like the slightest words I say might either break or heal her. We have been, we have been together since the beginning of this all, Ellie. Even, ban even back then, you were the person I relied on the most. I couldn't really talk after all. I gave her a smile. All this time we spent together, why wouldn't I want to treat you well, Ellie? I adjust my hands so I can use one to gently pat her hair with my fingers. Ellie is so small, six or seven inches high. But even with her small size, she still has a big heart. Ellie, I knew that you never meant any of them. I was never angry at any of them. Although I do admit some may have stung a bit, but never enough to make me hate Ellie. You can't love someone fully without fully accepting them after all. I'm sure it's the very same reason as to why you would go so far to protect me, Ellie. For a moment, her breath seemed to be taken away. She looked at me with a very strange expression. Then it morphed, her face blossoming into a beautiful, happy smile. So I wrapped my hands around her gently and she extended her arms towards me. It is, Ellie. My feelings for you have never been so clear before. <laughs> um, Ellie, I love you. <laughs> That's... I'm using my fear as Batman's Mike, uh, Michael Keaton's Batman, okay? So, what else? Here in this luxurious hotel room, Ellie and I kissed for the first time. It was something awkward but enjoyable, nothing the less. Her face being is so small in relation to mine because she's six or seven inches high! It's almost, a, you know, it's like, and just I felt a slightly peck on my lips from her own, and I'm going to end myself there, okay? So, knock it off! Even so, she held both my cheeks with force, doing her best to convey her passion for me. <laughs> a kiss between a man and a mask. Minuscule, minuscule fairy. Who would have ever think of such a thing? Tell that to Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. It kind of works, though. If you watch the movie called Hook, which it works. At Robin Williams and Julia Roberts. You know, I, 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 I've seen the movie and it was. It was fantastic. Ellie was burning with the flames of love, her affections being just a touch desperate. The desperation of someone who forced themselves to hold back their feelings for a long time, only to finally get the release they both feared and desired. It was not like my own passion was any less than hers, even though I was making a mess of her entire... You know... <laughs> Neither her nor I really cared. Both of us felt like volcanoes. Finally exploding after decades of withstanding pressure. But still, what am I going to say to those back in headquarters from the Alliance? I'm pretty sure the headquarters of the new headquarters is nearly complete ever since Tony Stark and Bruce Wayne... 
gave uh, and put themselves in the, in the gave us a small uh, giving us a fort that uh, quite worth the fortune to make. She pulled away from our kiss to stare at me, a dazed and happy look on her face. Ellie. Oh, come on. <laughs> Again with being called a sicko! What is with you calling me that way? Anyways, come on! Let's start calling him myself an insult! Then again it was. And it is, and. Yeah. <sighs> Her words were heartfelt and sincere, and I couldn't help my beating heart. She looked so attractive all of a sudden. Can't help but want to kiss her more. You are too cute for your own good, Ellie. <laughs> she laughed with a smile on her face, then spread her arms in my direction again. Seems she does that when she wants affection. I better take note of that. Let's rest... Yeah, why not rest, rest for today, I suppose. To be honest, neither do I. Once again. <laughs> I'm happiness in the joy and full loving way. And with desperation, Ellie and I bonded like we never had before. And yes, I'm going to be so busted. And if anybody would like to whack me behind the back of my head, you're welcome to do that. Status quo. <laughs> oh, I do believe this is a great stopping point, and don't you worry... We are going to continue to pick up from where we left off, and thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and tell me what do you guys think of Gotcha Memories, the visual novel. Do you like it or hate it? Mash that like button or share this video. If you guys want to get, if you guys are free to whack me behind the head because I do enjoy it, but I'm hiding under a rock. I'm not giving you the location. But you'll have to guess where and which rock am I hiding. So, this is Leo Wolverine saying and speaking as always as your friendly neighborhood Master Chief. Who takes chances making mistakes and getting messy like peanut butter and chocolate or breakfast for dinner. When the going gets tough, the job gets it done for a breath of fresh air. You can tell that to the NCO. In Leo's Let's Plays Alliance, this is Alliance Tane. And, and, the Gotcha Memories of Visual Novels rated T for T. Godspeed, play safe, and shalom. Remember to fight with honor, love, truth, and justice. And see you guys next time for more of Gotcha Memories, the visual novel. I'm hiding under a rock! I am an agent in distress! Cockpit moving on! <laughs>